Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Yoga 920 from Lenovo. This is another one of their two-in-ones, but this is kind of the high end of their line. We've looked at the 720s in the past. Now this one has a 13.9 inch display and uh, like the other Lenovo two-in-ones, it can fold down into tablet mode here or it can go into tent mode uh, or of course you can have it uh, run in this display mode here also. So you do have a couple of different options for uh, using it. And we're going to be putting this thing through its paces here in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. We send it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now, I was very eager to take a look at this one because this is the first computer I have looked at this year uh, with the new eighth generation Intel processor built in. And uh, this one now is a quad core using the same uh, power consumption as last year's dual core processors did. So it doesn't necessarily make it twice as fast, but it does have double the cores over where this class of machine would have been performing just a few months ago. So this is a nice little bump in performance, and you'll see some examples of that as we go through some of the testing on here. Now, there's a whole wide range of prices on these devices. So uh, this one starts at around $1,300 or so and goes up from there. Uh, they sent me the higher end model to look at here. So this one, believe it or not, has a 13.9 inch 4K display. I think that's probably overkill. You could probably get by with the 1080p display that's on the lower cost version, but it is a very nice looking display. We've got 16 gigs of RAM in this one. I believe we've got a 512 gigabyte SSD. And we also have in here the new i7-8550U. Uh, the lower price model has the i5 processor, but that one is also now a quad core uh, versus a dual core. So you do benefit from uh, some of that stuff. And I've got a computer bug on here. We'll have to zap in a few minutes. Now you get a really nice premium build here for the premium price tag. It's an all metal design. It really looks pretty nice. And uh, the sides here have this nice polished look to them. So you get a nice shine here on the side. Really looks pretty, pretty nice. Uh, you also have their premium hinge mechanism that we've seen on a number of the other uh, Lenovo 2-in-1s -in over the last couple of years. And the hinge works really well because you can pretty much put the display uh, anywhere you want it and it doesn't bounce around all that much. You get a little bounce to it, but uh, not much and you can of course use the touch screen here without the laptop tipping over usually and I found it to be a very sturdy and uh, stable hinge mechanism here and again you've got all that two-in-one functionality you can do with it too so really nice hinge on it nice metal design uh, you also have some ports here that I think some of my techie viewers will find of interest the uh, two USB-C ports here are Thunderbolt 3 ports and uh, we did some testing on this and then confirmed with Lenovo uh, that these are four lane Thunderbolt ports. A lot of the other Thunderbolt ports we've looked at on prior Lenovo editions, including the 720s that we looked at a few weeks ago, those were only two lanes. Uh, these are definitely four and that might make the difference if you are hooking up external GPUs to this, for example, because there is no discrete graphics processor in here, unfortunately. It's not even an option at the moment, but you can plug in one of those external GPUs, and if you go beyond the 1070 that we tested a few months ago on the two-lane device, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of those data pathways on here. Both ports, at least in my testing, support uh, 4X, so that is a good thing, and it's nice to see them uh, getting their Thunderbolt ports bumped up a little bit. So if you are looking to do a lot with Thunderbolt, you'll be able to get it here. And the fact that there is no GPU uh, does give you the option to add one later. If you want to do that, I'll put a link down below to our external GPU overview so you can get more information on that. You've got a combo headphone microphone jack here on this side. On the other side, you have a regular USB 3.0 port. Uh, this will charge your devices even when the computer is off and then your standby power switch is over here. So no card reader on this one, a pretty basic set of ports here, but you do have, again, some really nice high-performing Thunderbolt ports on there. I'm very fond of the keyboard. This follows some of the newer uh, Yoga keyboard designs we've been looking at recently. Uh, this is a backlit keyboard, uh, nicely, uh, nice shift key on the side here. That was one of the issues with the prior models is that they had kind of half a shift key over here. They fixed all that, so uh, nice full-size keys really easy to type on, good travel on these also. I'm very pleased with the trackpad on this, one of the nicer trackpads I've seen Lenovo make, uh, very responsive and 
uh, seems to be working quite well as I've been playing with the machine here. So I'm quite pleased with all of that. Uh, you also get a fingerprint reader here on the side so you can very quickly uh, get into the computer to unlock it. Now the weight on this one is three pounds or 1.37 kilograms. Not all that heavy, although it does get a little awkward in tablet mode here because it does tend to strain your wrist a little bit when you're holding it. Uh, certainly not a unique problem to uh, this particular two-in-one. Most suffer from that, but uh, it does work actually well with a pen, which we will be taking a look at here in a second, so stay tuned for that. Uh, battery life we're seeing coming in around uh, anywhere from 9 to 10 hours on the 4K version, depending on what you're doing with it. Obviously, playing games and stressing the CPU will certainly impact battery life more, but uh, there is better better battery life to be had on the 1080p version of this device. Uh, you might get an extra hour or two, if not more, on the 1080p version just because it's uh, having to push less pixels out to the screen. Uh, the display is very bright too, so having that display brightness turned up will uh, also make an impact on battery life. So if you do uh, reduce the brightness down a little bit and uh, keep your uh, usage relatively minimal, you should be able to get 9 to 10 hours out of this even on the 4K version. But I was very pleased though with just how bright and uh, nice the display is on this thing. Now a lot of viewers have been writing in lately about fan noise and some folks were not happy with the fan noise out of the Yoga 720. And of course on these higher end laptops they are running with more powerful processors that do heat up and the only way to get that hot air out of the system is to blow it out with a fan. Uh, the fan noise on this is probably the quietest I've heard uh, on a laptop of this size. So it's noticeably less noisy uh, than what I saw on the 720 and many other laptops I use, including my fancy MacBook Pro. It is definitely the quietest fan I've heard in some time, or not have heard, perhaps. Uh, you have all the venting here between the hinges, so everything from intake to outtake is happening right in here, so you don't have to worry about keeping the uh, bottom clear. You can put it on your lap and not worry about the laptop overheating. And if you are really sensitive to noise, they also added a quiet mode to the mix, and you enable that by hitting function Q. Now, it was working when I first got the laptop, but it's no longer giving me an indication that it's going into that mode. And maybe there's some update or something I've got to install on it, but uh, it does have a quiet mode that will uh, run the fan presumably less, but it's also going to make the laptop run slower. So if you're in an environment where you cannot have a fan running, I think you could probably switch it into quiet mode and not hear much of that uh, fan noise at all, but you will be taking a performance hit. Uh, the side benefit, though, is that you might see better battery life because the computer will be running slower. Now, as I mentioned, it also has pen support, and this is the Lenovo Active Pen 2 that came bundled with my particular device here. This is an add-on, though, so uh, depending on how you configure your computer, the pen will add a little bit of cost. I think it is about $70 on its own. Uh, they also give you a neat little holder here that slides into the USB 3 port on the right side of the device, so you can keep your pen with you while you're walking around, and then you can just uh, slide it out of there to get the pen out and working. I found the latency on the pen to be very good. It's not uh, too laggy, and it also has very good wrist detection. So as my hand here is resting on the screen, I'm able to draw here without any extra stuff showing up on screen here. So pretty good uh, from that standpoint. My only gripe with the pen is that these buttons are ultra sensitive. So often when I'm writing here, I'm accidentally hitting the eraser button here. So you really have to be very careful about uh, how you hold the pen because it doesn't take much of a push uh, to activate these buttons on here. So that was my only real gripe with it. It does run on two different batteries. This is something I've seen on a few other pens like this. So there are uh, two little watch batteries for the Bluetooth radio, and there's a quadruple A battery for the tracking inside of the pen as well. Uh, these are not rechargeable, so you probably want to have a few laying around. You'll probably get a couple of months of use out of it, depending on how often you're using it. But uh, just bear in mind, the pen is not a rechargeable device and will consume batteries. All right, so with all the hardware out of the way, let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. We're going to begin on my YouTube channel looking at a 1080p 60 video and all is working well with no drop frames so you should have good performance on YouTube and Netflix and Hulu and other sites. I will also take a look at some web browsing. We'll load up nasa.gov, a very multimedia rich site. And as you can see here, it's springing up very quickly. That is uh, partly due to the processor on board, but also because it has a two by two wireless AC radio as well. So a decent performance on that front and uh, about what I would expect this machine to perform at. So no issues with web browsing there. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 178.6. 
and compare that to the score we got on the X1 Yoga from Lenovo. We're going to be looking at that one in the next couple of weeks. Uh, that device is running with an i7-7600U, the prior generation processor. It scored 153. So you can see those extra cores uh, do make a difference here. And the breakthrough on the eighth generation processors is that you're consuming the same amount of power, uh, but adding more cores. And you're seeing some of the benefits of that uh, through a test like this. So you will get maybe slightly snappier performance than you might have had on prior generation laptops and applications that uh, use multi-threading and really take advantage of all the cores available to them uh, will run faster on this computer versus some of the prior generation devices. Now, as fancy as this is, this is definitely not a gaming laptop as it's configured because you don't have a discrete GPU built in. I was hoping maybe they could cram in uh, one of the new MX150s or something into here to give it a little more of a graphical boost but unfortunately you're going to be dealing with the Intel graphics on this and our uh, testing shows that graphically this isn't much faster than the prior generation processor. So the seventh generation processor brought in a lot of additional graphics performance. Uh, here we're not seeing that but we are seeing greater CPU performance. But let's take a look at a couple of games that we did run on it and then we'll uh, take a look at some of the benchmark scores and see how all of this plays out. Uh, we'll begin first with Minecraft as we always do. Why not? Uh, we got some decent frame rates there even at 4 K, uh, 70 to 84 frames per second, which wasn't too bad. Uh, we also took a look at Rocket League with uh, the bare bones settings. That's what we usually do on uh, our uh, Intel powered laptops here. And we were getting frame rates at around 35 to 40 frames per second at 1080p with all of those settings turned down. So it does seem like you can get a relatively playable Rocket League uh, performance out of this thing, but it's no better than what we saw on the seventh generation chips that really did make Rocket League finally playable at 1080p on Intel hardware, provided you have all the settings turned way down. We're not seeing any real better performance here on Rocket League than we did before. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 7,850. And this is one of those times where you need to kind of dig into the results a bit to uh, see exactly what kind of performance gains we're getting. Because graphically, we're not doing all that much better than the Yoga 720, which had the seventh generation i5 processor. But take a look at the CPU results on the physics test here. Uh, we're seeing much better performance, nearly 19 frames per second on that test uh, with the 920 here with the eighth generation processor. The IdeaPad 510S we looked at a little while ago that had an i i7-7500U from the prior generation came in around 12 or so. So we're seeing a pretty sizable bump here in CPU performance because Intel's focus on the eighth generation is a bump in the CPU, which is what we got here. Graphically, it's about the same as the prior generation, but if you are doing computationally intensive things like video editing or maybe some engineering applications and whatnot, uh, you will definitely see better performance out of this generation of processor without a real hit to the uh, power consumption here. And that's the real uh, innovation with these eighth generation chips. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test on this device and we got a score of 90 95.7%. Now passing is 97%, so you might see a little CPU throttling going on uh, the harder you push the machine here, but uh, generally I think for most applications you shouldn't see any real uh, drops in performance when you are under load. And one last thing to check out, and that is its Kodi performance. We've got our 4K 140 megabits per second HEVC file running here. Uh, no drop frames, everything is running as I would expect it to. Uh, that was another innovation in the seventh generation chipset was optimizing that type of video playback. We're seeing the same thing, of course, in this one. So you shouldn't have any problems playing back uh, even some super high-end video on this device. I was also quite pleased with the speakers on this one. They are uh, downward firing JBL speakers, but they are very loud and clear. Uh, decent sound quality out of them too. Not as good as a pair of headphones would be, of course, but uh, surprisingly good for downward facing speakers here. So very good audio performance and very good video performance on this one too. So all in, I think this is a very nice device. You're certainly paying a hefty price tag for it, but it does meet my expectations on uh, its overall performance. I would have liked to have seen a GPU packed into this because it really would make it a, a killer device just to have a little better graphics performance when you are out and about. But uh, you do have the option of plugging in an external GPU into one of these four lane Thunderbolt ports here on the side and uh, be able to expand out its graphics 
graphical capabilities when you are not out and about. So my only uh, knock against it is that. But really classy looking design here. I really like how they have the polished uh, corners and sides here. It really looks like a nice device that I think will get you a lot of compliments as you're walking around. And of course, that hinge is very nice on it too. So if you got the money, this is a, a very nice laptop, probably one of the nicest ones I've seen Lenovo uh, put together. And I can uh, certainly recommend this one if you got the cash for it. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lan.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lan.tv slash s.